Good morning, Tallahassee. It's time to wake up War Chant on 97.9 ESPN Radio. Here's WarChant.com's Aslan Hajavandi and Corey Clark. Welcome on into the show. It's Wake Up War Chant. 97.9 ESPN Radio. Maslon, he's Corey. You already know that. Part of the WarChant.com family. He's the senior writer and columnist. I'm the director of digital media. Corey, it was just a sleepy Monday. We don't have a lot to talk about today. Yeah, really. No big deals at all going on in uh, the Hassie. But first, before we get to that. Can I coin it? Do people call it the Hassie? I call I it. The, me and my friends call it the Hassie. I don't, I don't like calling it tally. I don't like calling it tally. Yeah, most people, I think, if they shorten it, are going to call it tally. Yeah. But I like the hassy. So do or I. Or the hass. Yeah. It's like people call it the natty. Like, I don't call yeah, it the I natty gotcha. tally. I, gotcha. no, I don't like that stuff. <clears throat> but I was uh, privy to what I think is has been the highlight thus far of my month. I'm not a big Little League World Series guy. But <laughs> sitting down and watching about, I don't know, two innings worth of action with Corey Clark will change your whole outlook on Little League Baseball. Right. They, they should have a feed. Like, there should be a, a pay-per-view feed where there's no Carl Ravitch, there's no Kyle Peterson. It's just you. It's just me making fun of the 12-year-olds crying. That's spirit. Just sitting yeah. at the bar. That's spirit, yeah. Sipping on a Diet Coke and just shooting the, you know, just your observations raw, unfiltered. And I, I should point out that I do not like that the Little League World Series is televised. Like, all of it, it's crazy to me. It's bizarre. It is weird and kind of perverse to see 12-year-olds losing their blank in the middle of the field because the, <laughs> the catcher just made a bad throw. Um, so it's perverse that that's, there's so much of that. But also, holy moly, we'll get to Florida State. I know the AD just quit. Um, but, man, some of these kids are monsters. Yeah. They are six-foot freaks. And they're 12 years old, and the mound is the still same distance it's been for 70 years. It's like, man, you got to adjust to the comment. I mean, these kids are throwing high 70s from 45 feet, which is the equivalent of like 100 miles an hour, and you're expecting these normal-sized 12-year-olds, like 4'10", 86 pounds, to hit it. It's nuts. So there's every, every inning is just three strikeouts. But, you know, yeah, so I guess – and I didn't ask them to turn it on, by the way. It was on. Right. We, were just, we just happened to be there while you were eating your salad. Because you're I did, a rabbit. I did eat a salad. There's a lot of lettuce on that thing, man. Yeah, yeah. They come at it. They, they get after it. You know, I don't want to steal, you know, your honey, man. But I, that'd be nice if Spirit sponsored this show. Because hey, I man, noticed. Hey, hey, I, hey. I, hey, I'm hey. Not, I, hands are off. Hands okay. are off. Well, all right. I noticed behind the cooler, they had Corona Premier and Corona Light. Okay. I don't even know why places have Corona Extra. Who wants Corona Extra when there's Corona Light out there? I know they have Mick Ultra. Which is all anybody really cares about. And that's what Corona Premier is. It's the it's the Mexican Michelob Ultra. <laughs> oh, right. That's my that's beer. If you open tagline, we're actually we're, we're coming to you live from my house uh, in Midtown Tallahassee. If you open up my refrigerator, you will see uh, a stockpile Mick Ultra? of yeah. All right, I like it, and I put a lime in my beer too. Everybody, get over it. Yeah, you know, I, I, don't you know, I don't mind that. I don't mind the old lime in the beer. These people, are, oh, of course Aslan would. Whatever, man. Whatever, man. I'm live my life. Yeah, you do you what live you your do, life. Buddy. You do what Sub-tweet you do. Subtweet troll. I'm gonna live my life and prosper. Mm-hmm. All right, let's talk about Florida State sports. Should we start? I guess let's start off with the top and work our way to the bottom. Okay. With the rank and file. So the athletic director or director of athletics, rather, uh, Stan Wilcox, who's been there since 2013. He brought a national championship to Tallahassee sure. on the well, football field right. upon his arrival in Tallahassee. He was in the office when the championship was won. Right. I don't know that he brought one to Tallahassee, but he was he was okay. uh, it was on his watch. What about the softball national championship? What about a trip to the Elite Eight? Again, all those hires were made before him, okay. the people that did that. But uh, he, he certainly didn't do a bad job while he was here by any stretch. I, I see your narrative. Yeah. I see your narrative. That, I think, I think there was – talking to Ira, who we should have had on the show if we were actually recording in the studio. We could have patched him in. Um, but it sounded like there was some rumblings that he might be looking for other opportunities. So I don't know how much that, that blindsided uh, the guys that are dialed into the know. Um, it, it caught me off by surprise. I wasn't expecting the athletics director to leave, but, um, I mean, it happens, I guess, right guys. They, I mean, you got a pretty plum job. It sounds like if you're a Stan Wilcox or for the NCAA. Yeah. And I don't know, you know, I think his contract was up next 2020. year. Yeah. Through 2020. Um, so or, yeah, 2020. So two years. Yeah. Um, but he, I don't know that he would have worked his last year without a re-up on his contract. So I think it was going to come to a head anyway, and maybe the next year, nine to nine months to 12 months. And, 
Um, maybe they wanted to go in a different direction. Maybe he wanted to go in a different direction, and this was a, a really good landing spot for him, knowing what was inevitable in a year and a half or something. Um, you know, I will say – What's interesting about Florida State Athletics, man, is that, you know, they pay their women's basketball coach a lot of money. They pay their soccer coach a lot of money, and they're both very, very good at what they do. They don't bring in any money to, yeah. the, to the university. And that's kind of been, at least since I've been covering Florida State for the last 10 or 11 years, that's kind of been the, the, the way Florida State handles things is they, they don't mind paying good money to sports that don't bring in money. In some some universities, want to funnel almost all their money to football because that's the bell cow, or you know maybe men's basketball, income producing sports. That's what produces the revenue. So they want to put all their money into that. Well, Florida State isn't like that. They put a lot of money into football. Don't get me wrong, but they also really care about the other sports, the quote unquote Olympic sports or the non revenue sports. Um, So it'll be interesting. And Stan Wilcox was a champion for all those sports. Mm It'll be interesting when they make the next hire, knowing what they have to build, knowing that they have to keep up with Alabama's 600 million monolith or whatever they're building over there with space cars and, and <laughs> everything in, in Tuscaloosa for their football players so they don't have to rub shoulders with the students. They can just teleport to class. Um, you know, I, I wonder what, the, what that AD, what his vision for the athletic department will be. Because Why, he? I think can it be she? Or she, sorry. A good point, Aslan. You're yeah. Look at you, champion. Twenty first century, yeah. Um, so what that what that new AD will what that vision will be because, you know, Florida State is fall, not falling behind, but they just don't spend as much on football as the SEC schools. They don't. They also don't have as much revenue. But at Florida State, it actually does matter to finish high in the Directors Cup. It matters to them, and I think personally it should. Uh, but I understand the other side of it too. Is like okay, well, football is making football is the the revenue producer. So the vast majority of all the money, almost all of it, should go into football. And if we want to pay the soccer coach one hundred eighty thousand dollars instead of six hundred thousand dollars, that's our prerogative. Is that how much Mark Corian's making? Oh, I don't know, but he makes a good bit, and I know Sue Simrall makes a good bit. Right. Um, and you know they've actually gotten off on the cheap with baseball uh, right. for years. But whoever the next baseball coach is is going to want money. So it's going to be a, it's going to be interesting to see what the ad's what the ad's vision is as far as uh, the, the non-revenue sports. Because Stan Wilcox, again, like I said, championed them um, and was, a, was you know, he, he gave them a, a lot, th- those non-revenue sports. And they're all really competitive, almost all of them. Mm-hmm. And uh, that, that's a, I think that's a point of pride with Florida State fans. But at the end of the day, would they care if they didn't have a great women's basketball coach or a great soccer coach? And is that going to come to a head in the next, uh, next decade? With the new AD, it's just you know they're not mutually exclusive things though. You can't promise football prosperity and, and success by saving money on on the women's basketball program. No, they're not mutually exclusive, but there aren't a lot of program. Florida State doesn't have the money and the endowment that like obviously Michigan Stanford or, has or Michigan yeah. or Florida. All those other schools you see in the top ten in the Directors Cup have usually typically way more money. Than Florida State does billions. endowments, like billi- bill- literally billions, billions, yeah. billions. Um, so it makes they have the money to pay for facilities and to pay pay coaches. Florida State, it matters to be good at other at all the sports. It matters to them. I don't know that it matters at Alabama. It doesn't. Um, they, they care about though. football. They care about their gymnastics program. Right. Yeah, they got the gymnastics. Florida State it really is top ten and in, in you know top twelve in women's basketball, softball. Volleyball, beach volleyball, um, you know, just all these other sports, baseball all the time, the sports that don't make a ton of money. And I think Stan Wilcox enjoyed that. He was from Duke. They all, they heck, they're not good at football, so they were good at all the – they tried to be good at all the other things. And uh, it'll be – whoever his replacement is, if he's going to carry on – Or she. Or she. Golly, what's up, what's up with me? Uh, I'm not a Neanderthal. I'm not a caveman, not, no. people. Um, he or she, if they're going to carry on kind of that vision that I think Stan Wilcox had. If you're not a member for Warchant.com, I, I suggest using the uh, Warchant 30 promo code for 30 free days. I, I, talking to Ira, I think he's going to do kind of a, a, a post-mortem, he kind of said, on, on the Stan Wilcox tenure. So there seems to have been, in a, a, I don't know, a catalyst, but a moment that kind of things might have shifted in terms of his uh, his tenure, maybe not a writing's on the wall, but just – 
one of those things where, all right, maybe just, you know, maybe it's time to move it on out of here. I think Ira's going to touch on it. I think the the football facility, I, I think, has been a, a point of contention. I don't think that's really any inside right. breaking news. But I think there's 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 certain layers to it that, that it might be eye-opening if, if, if Ira does get around to writing that column, which I think he's going to. Yeah, and I just, again, I, I go back to, uh, and again, Florida State, I shouldn't say again because I haven't mentioned this. I hate when people do that. Right. Um, we keep saying it all the time on the show, and people like it's the first time I listen to the yeah. show, or they didn't well, listen also, to it. and I haven't said it uh, this this episode, but you know, Florida State's the way they handle the athletic department money is different than most schools. You know, it's it's Seminole Boosters controls a good portion of the money. The AD does not, and that's not how it is at many other schools. So you know, you 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 don't just have to deal with the athletic director when you're when you're asking about money. The athletic director has to talk to Andy Miller of Seminole Boosters. And there, it, it can get complicated. But, again, it's worked out okay around here. Yeah. You know, you people act like it's this huge obstacle. Um, but then, you know, you've won three national championships in football. I think there's only two other schools in the last 25 years that can say that. Um, and then you just won a softball national championship. You were great at track. I mean, you you you're, you just finished top ten in the Director's Cup. So you have one of the best athletic departments in the country, even though there are some obstacles with the money. Yeah. Let's step aside. First break of the day. When we come back, uh, we'll talk about the rank and file stuff in Florida State. That is uh, the football program. He's Corey Maslon's Wake Up War Chant, 979 ESPN Radio. Coming right back after this. You're locked in to Wake Up War Chant on 979 ESPN Radio. He's Corey Clark. I'm Aslan Hajavandi. It's Wake Up Board Chant, 97.9 ESPN Radio in Tallahassee. We'll do the Renegade Express probably on Thursday. I haven't looked too far ahead on the schedule, but uh, if not Thursday, we'll do it Friday. Give us a call, 850-792-5730, 850-792-5730. We'll also post a thread on the Tribal Council. You can leave uh, suggestions, uh, comments, questions, and we'll get to it on the program. That's how it works. Before we go into uh, the actual football team, which is what you know pays the bills around here, any names that have been floated out there that uh, interest you or you find intriguing? I'm, you know, I don't want to further distance myself from uh, the fans that listen to the program. I'm not too high on bringing in a former athlete to be the AD. I'm just, I'm not that guy. Well, again, I. I, I, Randy Spetman was a bizarre hire. Yeah. He he didn't – he just was a bizarre hire. Um, I guess he did okay while he was here. He hired a couple of number twos that the the, the regular fans didn't know about, didn't know their names, but they were disasters. Um, th- but, you know, he also hired Lonnie Alameda. Um, he hired the Chris Poole, the volleyball coach. Now, they, they reached out to him more than he did a national search. But anyway, he gets credit for bringing in those yeah. coaches. That's fine, and they're, they're both very good at what they do. Um, so, but who, he wasn't on anybody's radar. And then I don't know that Stan Wilcox was on anybody's radar to quite honestly. So I, I, it would, I think it'll be somebody, maybe it's somebody that we've thought about. I I don't know. Why does this job attract huge names? Of course it will. But it hasn't in the past though. I mean, they got the number two at Duke, which is, you know, that's a lot of money that funnels into the the athletic department at Duke. They got the number two at Duke to be the AD. I I don't know that you're going to get like, I mean, you're not going to get what's it? Well, he just retired anyway. The guy at Florida. You're not going to get uh, uh, Strickland. Did Strickland take that? Yeah, job? Scott Strickland left Mississippi State. To I go don't down think there. Florida State will go get an SEC AD to come be their AD. Maybe they, don't they have can to do that. I mean, maybe um, but you could get a number two from one of those spots. You could maybe get somebody out the pack. You need somebody that's that's used to running an athletic department that wants to succeed at everything, because that's what this thing is, man. It does, and I hope it stays that way. I know football. I know where we're shifting. And I, and I really do think the Alabama thing that was announced last week with the $600 million might sound alarm bells. And we've got to bring in somebody that only can raise money. Mm-hmm. And that would help, actually. You do, you do need someone that's maybe yeah, – that, 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 that's – More a financial business sense guy than a – Yeah, it may be – athletics a, background, Maybe though. it's a little more comfortable hobnobbing with people and, and backpatting and, and, you know, doing whatever you had to do, you know – Whatever you have to do with the big money people, right? You you got to get somebody that can talk to those people. But you also, in my mind, you need somebody that cares about all the sports. I think that's what makes Florida State kind of unique, is that they do care about all the sports. 
and they want to be good at everything. And they do have challenges because they don't have the generational money that some of these schools have. This is a treacherous path we're about to go down. But I'm gonna, to your point, yeah, sorry, not to fine. interrupt you, but I just did. Um, because you were, I don't like going down treacherous paths. Okay. You we know that. We won't. I don't, I mean, it, I, yeah, I don't know that Derek Brooks or Martin Mayhew or Bobby Bowden needs to come by and try, try to be the AD. I think you need somebody that's done this at a big school, even if it's the number two, that's seen how it's done um, to, to run this program. And frankly, you, you should try to aim for somebody that's at a, uh, a school that, again, cares about all the sports and, and does treat soccer not the same as football because it ain't, and it's not going to get nearly the money, but cares about soccer and doesn't just push it off to the side. I like that Greg Phillips name. I mean, I haven't seen a lot of, of names float out there, but I guess he uh, most recently was co-director at IMG. Yeah, but before that was he was the Florida number State two. Financial. He's a Florida State. I think he's a Florida State alum, Yeah, but uh, he definitely has ties to Florida State, was here for a while, um, and then – Oklahoma, I think. Was the number two at Oklahoma back when uh, Florida State was playing out there. In like, so 2010, 2011, he was the number two at Oklahoma in the athletic department. Those are the things – those are the things I'm, I'm kind of looking at is, is – and again, who am I? But a guy that definitely has athletics, collegiate athletic uh, administration experience – and then the guy who's been dealing with money. And I feel like if you've been working IMG, you're probably dealing with well, large sums yeah. of money. And you've got to be a person that can talk to people. Yeah. you got to be a people – in my opinion, at Florida State, to get money, you got to be a people person. And he's a Florida State guy. I mean, he's an alum, so he knows the language. So that, that uh, would again, always it's, serve you well. An athletic director is just – you know, people think it's one job when it's another job. And, right. it, you know, it's just hard to really have an opinion. I, you know, I, did Stan Wilcox do a good job at Florida State? Hard I mean, to say he did a bad job. Well, exactly. It's in, in his his sports were good, and isn't that what an AD cares about? Um, he did, I think, make a really good hire with this football coach. Um, now, whoever it takes was a over, bold, it was a bold hire. It wasn't a, yeah, a, a sort it, of. But I, I think it was a good hire. But we don't know. But yeah. every hire you make is going to be a risk. I do think what makes this job interesting and unique is that you got a head basketball coach that's either seventy or almost seventy. Mm-hmm. And you've got a baseball coach in his last year, and he's a legend. And there's a lot of in, a lot of flux with that program that this that this fan base really cares about. So that's that's the first hire this AD is going to have to make. The first decision they're going to have to make is who's going to replace Mike Martin. I saw somebody they post, know that going in. I saw somebody post. All right, so what else do we need? They're like, we need a football facility, we need a baseball coach, and now we need an athletics director. Yeah, and you're going to need a basketball coach soon. I mean, I'm not yeah. saying Leonard's retiring tomorrow, but he. I don't think he'll coach till he's 80. Um, yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's a unique time to be taking over the AD spot at uh, Florida State. All right, as we know names, uh, we will let you know. We'll, maybe we'll bring on Ira on the program tomorrow when things calm down a little bit and have him shed some light because he's obviously that's his. That's he's his. He's more account. in tune with that side that's of Florida account, State than yeah. I am. I'm more of a Little League World Series guy. For sure, I'll give you give you my opinions on that's that. Why we love you, uh, you know. But let me let me throw some shade at Stan Wilcox. Why do you have to uh, rain on Corey Martinez's farewell tour, man? Right. Juan Martinez, you know, announced that he was going to uh, step away from the football program. Fifth year senior, already got his degree. Uh, was seeing first team reps with Cole Minshew having yeah. been out, and uh, I guess sort of. A, I mean, if you want to say abruptly, uh, I guess within his eyes it wasn't abruptly. I'm sure that's not something he took lightly. He was in the team photo Sunday, which is was, which is bizarre. Yeah, it would be interesting to talk to him and see what transpired over. I mean, I'm sure it's obviously something he was thinking about. Oh yeah. But what was like he just woke up Monday morning or he went before he went to bed Sunday night, he's like, I'm through. I like maybe the thought of getting up at whatever he had to get up, 7 in the morning. I, I was joking with Ira. I'm like, it's these morning practices, brother. Yeah. I'm like, it's just, you know, not everybody's built for this. I mean, we don't, you know, some of us don't want to be up in the morning. I ain't built for it. I I'm can not, promise you that. I, I wasn't yesterday. I tell you that I didn't become sure. a sports writer to have to get up when, at normal people hours. Yeah, exactly. That's ridiculous, Willie. Uh, but we're chasing greatness, though. Well, we I know he, that I saw you tweet that. I didn't realize he said that. That's funny. He did thank everybody on Sunday for coming out early. For and it actually day. seemed kind of genuine. Oh, it did. It yeah. did. Um, so, yeah, that's um, a bit of a bummer for, for that young man. But I think, who knows, maybe, I don't know, maybe Greg Fry got some more out of him. Maybe he was a guy that, you know, if, if Rick Trickett was still here, maybe he doesn't even make it this far and, and, and give it another go. But it just sounds like. You know, in terms of what Ira was reporting, you know, the sources that he contacted, it was kind of a, a passion sort of a thing. Well, you can't yeah. wake up at 6 in the morning and do all if this. If you don't love it. Yeah, man. If you don't love it, um, it's a good test, man. It really is. Football practice in itself can be brutal. really brutal. 
And then, yeah, man, you're a college kid getting up at 630 in the morning to go bang pads against a 300-pounder for three hours. you got to really have passion for what you do where it's, you know, you're wasting your time and everybody else's. And I think that must have just been – because he probably would have played this year. At least a little. It yeah. looks like he was kind of the guy they moved around. He was the swing guy. He was the swing guy that could have could have filled in for a couple of guys if they got injured. So he probably would have played. But if it's not the passion's not there, man, yeah. you don't want to get yelled at. You want to be banging against Demarcus Christmas. Um, that's not a lot of fun. So man, yeah, if it, if it's not something you want to do, might as well realize it before the season starts. Yeah, these guys agree he'll be all right. Tampa Catholic kid. Get it on his shoulders. I wonder, Life will work out for him. So I, 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 but I would like to talk to him, but I wonder if they uh, – Would you rather talk to him or Trey Lawson? Him, uh, Martinez. Whoa, I, I would what? like to ask uh, – you know, say say they get a rash of injuries by the third week of the season and three linemen have been lost for the year. Yeah. Um, could he come back? Could Martinez rejoin the team? I guess he could. I mean, it's, it's nothing official as long as he's still in school. But like, don't you have to be on the roster? Is there like, don't you feel like a roster almost? Well, like, I think he's in the media guide roster. No, I'm saying that they could add him to the roster. That's that fine. week or whatever. Yeah, yeah. If you're a walk on, you can they can bring you in the middle of the yeah, year. Yeah, so I would assume as long as he stays in school, yeah. he can change his mind in a week and decide to come back. It's up the I same mean, remember Rudy? Shape, Rudy quit for like half a second, and then he walked back onto the practice field, and they all gave him the slow clap. Rushed off the edge and sacked that guy from Georgia Tech. So you've seen Rudy, but not remember the Titans. Correct. Weird. I have seen Rudy. What's weird about that? I'm, <laughs> I mean, like Rudy's been out longer. It's just the yeah. I guess Rudy's window. been out like a, well, a decade longer. Yeah. That stupid movie. Does this concern you? Co-hosting a, a football program with a guy that hasn't seen Remember the Titans? Well, you're just. Right. I feel like you're right in the the sweet spot of age where you would have seen that. Right. You're a football well, see, fan. It came out probably when you were like 17. I watched Varsity Blues, man. That was I watched. Well, I remember watched, the Titans is a lot better than Varsity Blues. Let's not get overly. Varsity you Blues know, is a passionate about this. Pretty ridiculous. Hey, let's run the hook and ladder after Jim, Jim Bob Smith beep, beep. falls Billy on someone. Bob. Billy, Bob. Billy Bob Smith. I Billy Bob what Jenkins, name. whatever his name is. That kid is 490 pounds. He ain't playing football. He's two linemen by himself. He's like Terrence Cody. He's like the white Terrence Cody. Yeah, they don't have those guys on the offensive line. They just roll right by him. In Texas high school football, that guy's going to block a defensive end or a defensive tackle. Come on. Listen, okay, I'll watch Remember the Titans. Just don't talk bad about Varsity Blues. Is that well, fair? Well, all right, fine. It's just right. in, in the, the stupid accent that Dawson has. I don't want your life. <laughs> <laughs> He's like 33 years old <laughs> trying to play a high school quarterback. Yeah. All right, let's actually talk about football practice. And also, real day. quick, to oh. bring her back to Florida State. Yeah, sure. Florida sure. State just pulls the kid's scholarship because he tears up his knee. The whatever his name is, the Lance. Listen, you all thought Bobby Bowen was a really nice guy, but hey man, when it all costs. I mean, you know, I guess they had they did have McPherson and and Maurer coming in that yeah. same class, so you don't need the kid from Texas that's going to be hobbling around. Jared Jones from Walla Walla, Washington, as well. well he had already been out. He already I been out. I think yeah. I got you. All right, let's actually yeah, let's talk about football practice. We'll do that right after this. It's a uh, nine seven nine spin radio. It's wake up more chant. Ah, these recruiting updates are nothing but fluff. Are you wasting your time again on free blogs and social media to get the scoop on FSU recruiting? Yeah, it's all bait and switch. Get me excited with a headline, but get nothing in return. You're on Warchant.com. What's really going on with FSU recruiting? Could be another top five class, but for the real scoop, you'll need to get your own Warchant subscription. What's it cost? Free. There's a 30-day trial offer. Just sign up and you'll get full access through signing day. And nobody has more accurate and timely information on recruiting than Warchant.com. You know I like free. Sign me up. Warchant.com, Warchant.com your, your ultimate, ultimate seminal source. That's right. It ain't easy. Yeah. Do you mean? Well, I see the penitentiary or will it stay free? There's a generation of Florida State fans that you'll discover, Corey, that uh, just always we wonder what if, if Lance Harbor would have not – you know, on that fateful night, week one. I just feel like he kind of gave up on his dream a little too quickly. Like, I can't play football again. I hurt my knee. Yeah. It's not the 50s, bud. They have rehabs. They have, they have a place you can go rehab. Yeah, but like 99. It was and he still wasn't an early. option quarterback. What is this? I mean, as long as his knee's okay, but he's he got that it. rocket right arm. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, he could have reinvented himself and, and found a way to make it work. Yeah, as a coach at 19. I mean, come on, man. And also the worst scene in that whole movie. And uh, it's an all right movie. It's fine. I get it. The the deal with the teacher. Oh, in dancing. the strip club. I mean, come on, man. That's just not. That's what? Just, that's... You didn't. What, what what did that even add to anything? 
just that they got to see their teacher take off her clothes at a strip club. It's teenage hijinks. Why Why are you devoid of joy, Corey? That's my job. I just thought, but well, you know what it is, is I think that came out before Friday Night Lights. Yes, it did. But it was kind of, they. you know, it was in Texas. It was a passionate football a town in Texas. It was kind of built on Friday Night Lights, I think. That yeah. was kind of the motive. By the way, I've never seen Friday Night Lights start to finish. I mean, I've seen most of it. I've seen the, read end the book. Of it. I've not read the, the book. I've seen the show, though. Yeah, the, the book's show. incredible. Oh, and you've watched the show. Yeah. All right. Um, the book's incredible. The movie's okay, but the book is. I really awesome. like the movie. Uh, the, the just said bits you of it. That. So I haven't seen it start to end. But yeah, so I was thinking Varsity Blues would be more like that. Okay. Like a real life glimpse into Texas football. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it, it was, was MTV Films, brother. Yeah, it was not. It was a kind of, yeah, just one long music video. Okay, Monday's practice. All right, you tell me about it, buddy, because I did not get up to watch it. Yeah, you did. You were there. No, I wasn't. There was no, for people that don't know, most practices, there's availability beforehand. Correct. Where we can talk to players and at least some of the coaches. But mon- And I'm not complaining because we got everybody we needed on Sunday. But because we had media day on Sunday, that there was nobody available to talk on Monday. Which is understandable. But the practice was open for like the first seven or eight periods. Yes. But I did not want to go watch them punt. I did not want to get up. Uh, I should change that. I did not want to get up at 745 just to watch them punt for five periods. But it sounds like you actually got to see some stuff this practice. Yeah, it was eight periods, and they're five minutes a pop now. The la- yeah, the last that. few practices we'd been to, and again, this isn't a complaint, but it, they had only been like we'd only been open for like three periods, like 15 minutes, yeah. and it was a lot of just – you know, just kind of just punting and yeah. little. There was no, there was no one on one with anyone. Right. So it was just a lot of drills. It was punt. It was, like, it was like punt protection and. So. Yeah. But um, I knew Ira would be there. I knew War Chant would have it covered. So I was like, all right. Well, if I'm there, it's just overkill. Ira is the MVP, man. Well, he is for sure. So yeah, it was eight periods. So it's five minutes of pop. So it's about forty minutes. We're yeah, out there. You got some. You got some good stuff. I think uh, Ricky and Logan both were kicking field goals. I think the, the furthest they went out was 40. I'm pretty sure Ricky kicked three. I don't know if Logan kicked three. He might have kicked two, but they were perfect. They they hit all their field goals. I mean, All true. Right. They were true. That's good. Uh, top of the roof of the IPF, so it looked really good. Logan Talley's got a little pop, though. I mean, there's a little more boom off of his foot than uh, Ricky. Oh, 100%. But that just, dude has a – it was weird last year, and I think we might have talked about it at the end. His kickoff started not going – I think he got leg fatigue or was hurt or something. Yeah. But I remember as a freshman, it was funny because I tweeted this, and people think – I don't know who they think they're tweeting at when they respond to me. But I said, I think Logan Tyler might have the strongest leg of any FSU kicker of all time. Because right. literally all his balls, if he wanted to, he could send them through the uprights. I mean, it's just nuts. Yeah. And then, of course, Sebastian's Janikowski says, hello, Corey. Yeah, what about yeah, Jano? Yeah. So, have you ever heard of Sebastian Janikowski? Yeah, dude. I've been watching Florida State football since you were at your mom's teat. I know about Sebastian Janikowski. I didn't say that lightly. This guy has a thunderfoot, and he did as a freshman. His kickoffs were nuts, yeah. and he would kick them when he did because Jimbo didn't want touchbacks all the time. He wanted to like pin them. Why do they do that all the time? Well, so but as a freshman, and even I think some last year, at the beginning of the season, the high directional, he kick. would high, but he would kick them high, but they wouldn't come down at the twelve. They would come down at the one but we're sky high. I mean, that's a perfect kickoff. Yeah. And he was really good at that. But I think by the end of the year, for whatever reason, his kickoffs weren't the same. And I think maybe it's because of overuse because they were kicking off so much because of all the touchdowns they scored. Yeah. That was right. a joke. You didn't even get it. I did. I went along with it. Oh, okay. All right. Sorry. I thought it was a pretty funny joke. A little sarcasm because they didn't – I don't know if you guys listen to this realize, but Florida State didn't score a ton of touchdowns last not. year. Logan Tyler didn't have to kick off a lot. Correct. The Boston College game, he kicked off twice. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Crazy. I did see them unleash a rugby esque punt with Logan Tyler. Well, obviously with Logan Tyler. They did he got, do that at all last year? I don't remember. I don't think so, but like he's a he's, he's built an athlete. decently yeah. where I, I in, in open space against a cornerback, I I trust him to put his shoulder down and get another yard. I also think he could make he he's he's fast enough that I mean he's an athlete. Yeah. Like he, you could um, do the rugby do stuff, stuff, and if they're not him, respecting yeah. it, run, go run, for it. Because I always could, thought they should have done it with Gano. I think Gano was Gano a track was a guy tra- in yeah, high school. he was a really good athlete too. Uh, That's crazy, man, because the run of athletes they've had at that position, because Gano was like a all-state soccer player. Mm-hmm. It was really fast, for not just for a kicker, just for a person. And um, Dustin Hopkins was a crazy athlete. Like he could do windmill dunks and reverse dunks. Those gold cleats, playboy. It's, uh, that guy too, when you talk about a guy that had an, a crazy leg, or yeah. still does. He's got it. It's just something the way he's built, the yeah. the way the, I don't know the the ligaments were, are tight or something in him. Yeah. Um, those fast twitch muscle fibers that I'm so famous for, <laughs> man. He he's got 
crazy whip on his leg. But he was a great athlete too, man. He could do reverse dunks. Yeah. And I think he was a safety in high school. Logan or Dustin? Dustin. Okay. Yeah, good. I think Logan was too. I yeah. think they both were. A linebacker or something. Um, otherwise, observation, there wasn't – they – you know, I, I posted the, the video, the raw video from practice. You guys can watch it on YouTube as well as Warchant.com. And, you know, we mentioned this on the, the drive here to uh, Mikasa in Midtown. I'm having a little card problems right now, everybody. So if, uh, What's if you your address mechanic, here? Um, That's a joke. Don't give me oh, that way. Yeah, okay. <laughs> So not until you get a little more beloved by the fan base, then they can come by and give you yeah, roses and stuff. Yeah, like I've always wanted to know where Jameis's house was because I would drive to Birmingham a lot for work, and I always just want to stop by, you know, Bessemer and, and just like kind of like leave a wreath of flowers at the front door, like you know, just like pay tribute. All right, Lamar. sure, okay. He had a pretty I'm good sure uh, preseason dad was game listed the other day. back then. Yeah. So all right, practice wise. I don't know. Should we talk about injuries or what I actually saw that's substantial? We'll talk about the substantial stuff, I guess. Somebody made a comment about it on, on Warchant.com when I posted the raw video, and it's just like, amen, brother or sister. I think it was brother, though. The quarterbacks, and again, it's it's one period. They were doing some vertical stuff, go routes, maybe some skinny posts, deep stuff. 30 yards in the air, most of these passes at least. Just overshooting guys. I mean, the three scholarship quarterbacks. By the way, I've, I've learned like I don't even post uh, video the the walk ons anymore because then people are like, who's number fourteen? He looks pretty good. It's like he's a guy who's not gonna play. Right. And nothing Unless against Nolan McDonald. Wrong. Things go terrible. Great wrong. young man, but just probably not gonna play. It's you know, and if, if I'm wrong, then we'll all laugh at me. About probably it. won't play. Probably. I mean, won't there play. are there have been, including the guy that just won the Heisman. There have been walk on success stories. Yeah. But by and large, they don't ever get in a game. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, James had two bad throws. DeAndre had a bad throw. And and the guy commented, he's like, man, these guys are missing players against air. I'm a little worried. And, like, I'm not trying to sound any alarm bells, but, again, this just speaks to the larger point that we constantly kind of harp on, whereas it's tough for me to really look at what we've seen at quarterback and just think that surely one of these guys is, is head and shoulders better than the other. Yeah, I agree with you, man. So, you know, you know, Walt Bell said again that there is separation, but not enough. So I don't know what that means. I mean, it's not enough to where somebody can't make it up in, in two good days of practice, three good days of practice. But, man, I would really like to see our guys throw five reps, throw five deep balls, and just hit the guy. I mean, it, it doesn't have to be in stride, but don't overshoot him. It's going to be really interesting. And I posted this on the on the message board last night to a, in a thread about, I think the title was to all you Blackman fans. And most people, a lot of people pointed Come out. Come at me, bro. Like, uh, hey, man, I think the point was, hey, we're all Florida State fans. So, yeah. of course, we're James Blackman fans. We're also DeAndre Francois fans. And we're also Bailey Hockman fans. Like, you don't have to separate us into camps like ham haters and ham lovers. And that's stupid right. nonsense. Yep. I, it's just, it's mind-numbing. But anyway, I went in there and I said, man, this is going to be a fun, this is going to be fun for the next two years because it's not going away once a starter is named. <laughs> yeah. It's not because as soon as Francois or as soon as Blackman has a bad half, people are going to be like, or a scoreless quarter right. with three possessions that ended a punt or a turnover that don't end in points. Got to get 12 in there or got to get one in there. Yeah. Um, got to get 10. What I'm interested about, not so much the, that's just fans. I get it. But there's also, there's never really been a, there's never been a season in which the backup quarterback, whoever it is, has so much tape and has made so many big plays, yeah. in my opinion. You know what I mean? There just hasn't. Where well, they, Drew Weatherford behind Ponder. But he was third string. Like, he wasn't yeah. even the next guy. It was Devontre. So, with the, with the guy that's – there is a chance the guy on the bench could come in and spark the offense. And so, I wonder how that affects Willie Taggart. So, say Francois has a half, if he's the starter, yeah. where he's 9 of 17 for 86 yards and interception, and they have 7 points at the half or 10 points. Does he make a move? Are you quicker to make a move to a guy that has the experience that James Blackman has? Right. If they're close, and you just decide to go with 12 over 1, or the uh, vice versa, if they are really close this, this fall, does that mean that the leash is shorter with the starting quarterback? Because it seems like just – pragmatically, that it should be. If you're not that convinced that that guy is your best quarterback, that you already haven't named him, mm -hmm. or you wait until three days to be like, ah, all right, fine, it's DeAndre. <laughs> yeah, right. Then if he struggles against Virginia Tech for a quarter and a half, does Blackman come into the game? And does it become a thing where you play whoever the hot guy is? 
I hope there's not. not that's that the much worst. separation. That's the worst. And, I, and that's the thing, too. I don't really know how much of a shot in the arm one of those guys will give you coming off the bench. If, But if a, sometimes quarterbacks just have bad days. It, right. ju- it just does happen. And if you, you don't have to just grin and bear it and say, oh, well, he's our starter. We're just going to ride and die with him. I know he's not seeing it right now. I know he keeps throwing him at their feet. He's just off. But he's our guy. Well, in this instance – and it's really, really rare. I can't stress that enough how rare it is to have whoever the backup is will have a year's starting experience under their belt. Yeah. I don't, other than Weatherford, who again was the third string guy, I don't know that that's happened a lot in a place like Florida State. So, it's what about got, Brad and Casey? Brad started four games as a as a junior, and then Weldon took over, and then didn't look back until he got hurt. Yeah. Uh, so not a full year. So, and Weldon gave him a huge boost right off the bat right. in '90 when he came in. So. You wonder if if Willie's just going to be, all right, man. Yeah, DeAndre doesn't have it. Let's get let's get one in there. Yeah. Or if one James doesn't have it, hey man, get DeAndre ready. We got to we got to do something. This ain't working. No. Don't you think that's that 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 it's more likely to happen in a scenario like this where number one, it doesn't appear that there's a a clear guy that's world's shoulders better than the other guy, and the other guy has so much experience that he's, you know he's not going to be overwhelmed by the moment. That's a good point. I, I, five minutes ago, wouldn't have agreed with you, but you just kind of convinced me and swayed me to that side of the argument. Because I just feel like they are so close that you're just, you don't want them going out there playing scared that they're going to get a, they're gonna have the quick hook on them, that he's going to let them sort of sink or swim for a good amount of time before he, I don't, I don't see him being a panic guy and throwing people out there because he is a quarterback. Walt Bell has right. got, you know, the experience. I, I think they, they probably think it'd be best to, to let DeAndre work through the kinks of game. Um, you know, game speed or, or let James work through things or whatever. But, I mean, the fact that, yeah, I mean, if you get down in a bad hole, it's, you know, and things aren't looking good, quarterbacks have bad nights, why not go to the backup guy? It's it's not a guy who is an unknown commodity. You, you kind of know what you're going to get from and him. Typically, at schools like this, the backup is a guy that hasn't done much. Yeah. He just hasn't, not because he's not good, he just hasn't had a shot. Yeah. But these guys have. So it wouldn't be like throwing, for instance, Bailey Hockman, just saying, let's see what Hockman can do. Because your first series is a college, you know, you go against Virginia Tech in the third quarter and you haven't played a college football down, you might be a little overwhelmed even if you're good. No. But these guys won't be overwhelmed by that moment. They've all played, and, you know, James Blackman played at Clemson. DeAndre Francois played in Orange Bowl. They all have this experience, they have experience where they won't be, they won't be, you know, I don't know, overwhelmed by the moment when right. they get out there. So it's just, I, I actually think weirdly, I know the whole saying is if you have two quarterbacks, you really have none. I think in this instance, I think you want a starter and you want him to be good. He's your best guy. But there are certain nights where Tyler Holton didn't have his changeup working and he wasn't a great pitcher. Well, you don't just ride him for eight innings, even if he's getting shelled. Yeah. So in this instance, when you know you when there's a known commodity behind him and DeAndre Francois is struggling and can't hit the throws, all right, let's give Blackman a, sh- let's give Blackman a chance. Doesn't mean he's our starter next week. But DeAndre just doesn't have it right now. I always thought it was if you have two quarterbacks, you don't have one. Oh no, I thought it was. What did I say? If you don't have, if you have two quarterbacks, you don't have none. You well, no. Like if you have two quarterbacks, you really have none. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that's the same. All right, we'll go. With you yours. could be wrong though. Hey, um, I, I am wrong. Usually, I'm wrong a lot. <laughs> I wanted. To, I didn't mean to bury this all the way in the end of the third segment, which went really heavy on this. But I did want to say that. Um, I, I got a chance to listen to DeAndre's interview at Media Day. Did you do it, or was it Gene that did it? Gene, not me, yeah. Uh, dude, like, nailed it. It was awesome. That was really refreshing to hear. I, I only listened to, like, the first 30 seconds because I didn't feel like listening to the eighth interview of the day for 10 minutes. But I think the, the, the beginning of the interview is just him talking about he understands the opportunity he has at Florida State being the quarterback and the, the, the amount of people that are counting on him back home and in the locker room, and he doesn't want to let people down. I'm like, yes, awesome. And like, and I'm not, I'm not, you know, taking a victory lap on this by any means. Listen, I, the the way I described uh, my thoughts on his attitude is probably I, I misspoke, and I hate using the word misspoke because when you speak, you speak, and you know what you're saying. But it, it probably did come out much more, um, I don't know, Critical. angsty, yeah, than than I really intended it to. I'm a Florida State alum. I want to see Florida State do the best, man. I I don't I don't care if James Blackman throws 45 touchdowns or. Bailey Hockman does, or DeAndre. I just want to see a guy throw a whole bunch of touchdowns. But to see him, and listen, he doesn't have to be nice to the media. I get it. I'm not trying to say that you have to suck up to us or anything like that. But I just think, you know, just in the grand scheme of things, you know, there's certain responsibilities that go beyond just, you know, making plays on Saturday nights. And you, you have to take the kind of good with the bad. And I just felt like maybe, you know, he just was way just too, uh, you know, 
not wanting to talk to the media and just kind of open up and say, you know, his piece. It was just kind of cool to hear him say that because it felt gen- it sounded to me sounded genuine and a kid that, uh, like you've said, young guys, guys can change, man. No one ever wrote this kid off. I, I hope I didn't make it sound like I tried to write the kid off, but that was that was sort of a refreshing thing for me to hear. I, I, I was super proud of that kid. I think it's good. It's a good sign. It's a good sign for him. Yeah, and it's I mean, you're a quarterback. It's different. Yeah. And again, I you know I didn't have nearly the problem. I didn't have a problem with him at all the, when you did that one day because I remember what he was like. It's just not in his nature. He's right. not a, he's not a big talker, but he, I, it does seem like he's starting to understand what it means to be the Florida State quarterback. It just there, there's it's different, or just a quarterback in general. It's just different. And um, yeah, like I've said way back when, you kid, he's young. People yeah. change. People learn from their mistakes, and you know he he made some mistakes, not criminal ones. Really? Um, certainly not the thing where he left his team to go hang out in Orlando. That's not a crime. It just isn't a great look. But I think the guys on this staff that came in made him very aware how bad a look that was. And you hope, sure seems like it, yeah. but you hope that uh, it really resonated with him. How it about seems this like it has. Nickname for if we're not going to do parlez vu, which I do want to go with parlez vu, Francois. What about Quarto Prince? Because Haitian, you know, Porto Prince. But he's a quarterback, Cordo Prince. No, we're going to do parlay boo. All right, we're going to take a commercial break. We'll be right back after this. It's Wake Up War Chant 97.9 ESPN Radio. You're locked in to Wake Up War Chant on 97.9 ESPN Radio. I don't want to be with anybody at all. Did you see the tweet about somebody thought that I gave you all the credit for the spear idea? It was from our boy uh, Get Down Black. I think his name is Leroy, but it's also spelled, it could be Leroy. Oh, that but, was his idea. Yeah, yeah you're listen, right. That you, wasn't my idea. Well, his, his idea, idea was, was a the, spear, the feather thing. Yeah. I was giving you credit for the feather thing. And he had a thing where it would be in, e- in each corner. I think yeah. that's what his idea was. In each corner, there'd be a spear. But I think there should just be one spear that you get to plant. Right. And you had a feather for each turnover. And... um. Shout out to Benjamin who tweeted me this about the whole Florida thing with, uh, you know, Osceola playing the spear. Apparently the Seminole tribe would hold war games or basically train for war. Uh, when this would start, the chief would plant a spear from his horse. When it was actual war, the chief would signal that it was real war by dismounting the horse and planting the spear on the ground. That is why in rivalry games or big games, uh, Chief Osceola dismounts his horse and plants a spear from the ground. Now it's Osceola, by the way. Osceola. Well, I'm and, just reading. Uh, what did it mean when Burt Reynolds planted the spear? Ooh. What was that? What was that? What signal was that for? Because it wasn't war. <laughs> Come on, man. Respect, Burt. Okay, uh, those are the things uh, that were on the social media and the Twitter thing. We appreciate you guys uh, getting back to us on that sort of stuff. Don't forget. Uh, by the way, real quick, you can't overstate how big a deal Burt Reynolds was to Florida State Athletics back when Bobby was getting this thing really built. I mean, he was one of the biggest movie stars in the world, maybe the biggest one. Yeah. And he talked about Florida State all the time. Right. Just the name brand recognition that Burt Reynolds gave this university really is a big deal. So I, that probably sounded like a shot I was taking, but that guy did a lot, a lot, a lot for this university. And the lady who made Spanx can't even give us a chop on uh, Shark Tank. <laughs> oh, what are you going to do? Yeah, come on. Come on. I'm just kidding. She can do whatever she wants with her money. All right. So the, uh, the top 25 poll came out, the preseason AP uh, top 25 poll at the top was Alabama. Clemson two, your Georgia Bulldogs three, Wisconsin four. I did the snore not for the poll itself, but because Alabama's number one. Right. Florida the, State nineteen. Correct. Right? And right behind them is uh Virginia Tech at twenty. Miami's eighth, Notre Dame is twelfth. So there's five no Gators? The Florida's Central Florida, is that is that the Gator? That's the Golden no, they're Knights. not the Gators. Yeah, okay, the no, then that, that team is not in the top 25. The team from the SEC that's in Gainesville didn't make they're the top 25. They're not there. They're not there. I thought they had a good season last year. Yeah, not Didn't they so beat much. Kentucky? They did. Okay, yeah. well, that's all I remember Kentucky's not season. ranked, though. Oh, all right. Kentucky's okay, not it's not basketball, I guess. Uh, five SEC teams, five Big Ten teams, four from the ACC, five if you want to count Notre Dame, but Notre Dame is not. No, I don't count Notre Dame. A football Dame. Uh, member with the ACC, so uh, – this is a cool thing, too. I saw Ralph Russo tweeted this out. So people might get all, well, oh, you know, I don't like it. We're underrated or whatever. So 2014, the four teams who made the playoff in the first year were preseason ranked 1, 2, 3, and 5. Oh. But then since then, subsequently, in 15, 16, and 17, there's been at least one team that was ranked outside the top 10. All right. So in 2015, uh, the preseason 12th and preseason 19th team made the, the field 
uh, the college football playoff. In 2016, the 14th-ranked preseason team made the college football playoff. In the last year, the 15th-ranked uh, preseason team made the college football. So 19 not too far off of that. No. No, I mean, 2015, there was a team that was ranked 19 right yeah. there. I don't, And I'm trying to wonder who that was in 2015. Probably Michigan State, Michigan I'm guessing. State, maybe, yeah. Probably Michigan State. So, yeah, uh, there you go, everybody. 19th, and then you play Virginia Tech, who's 20th. So you'll get a, a quality win right off the jump. Right off the jump. A big win, too. Probably yeah. a 40-point win. And if Miami beats LSU, and LSU's ranked 25th, they're the, the lowest ranked. Uh, dude, Mississippi State's like, I think Mississippi State's ranked ahead of us, which is just bizarre. Yeah, they're one spot ahead of us, 18th. Well, they're SEC, man. I mean, a few years ago, that was the number one program in the country. I don't know if you recall that. That's true. They were number one in the country. <coughs> Bless you. Don't have a mute button inside uh, <laughs> no. the casa here to, in, in Midtown. That so. really echoed. Do you like that? Those nineteen sound about right. Is that fair? Yeah, same thing with the weren't they nineteen or twenty in the coaches that somewhere so. on there? Yeah, that's about right, man. I mean, they were seven and six last year, and I know they ended on a four game winning streak, but none of those teams, including Florida, were really any good at all. So I get. I mean, what I'm saying is I'm not saying there's not a reason to be optimistic and excited, but I get the skepticism. All right. Here's a little bit of a stat dump for you. So the AP poll began in 1936. Ohio State's been number one the most. I can't believe Ohio State has it. 105 weeks, they've been number one. Um, number six is Florida State, 72 weeks. Yeah, and Florida State didn't even wasn't even playing football. And it's like what 50 something. Yeah, well, yeah. 47 or 48, yeah. but they weren't really competitive, real competitive, honestly, until like Bill Peterson got here in the early 60s. So oh. that I mean, all those schools had. Decades and decades of a head start on Florida State. I mean, Ohio State, Alabama, OU, Notre Dame, Southern Cal. Those yeah, are listen to those ahead. schools. I mean, and those then there's Florida ahead. State. And Florida State's ahead of Nebraska. And also, uh, this is Alabama's seventh time being a preseason number one. Uh, that's fourth most. Oklahoma's got the, the most. They've been preseason ranked number one ten times. Florida State is tied for fifth with Nebraska six. Okay. And nor in any of those polls I just talked, talked about, in any of those numbers, uh, was in University two of Miami six, or Florida? Oh, that's weird. That is weird with Miami, honestly. But um, two of those six, Florida State ended up winning the national championship, including one time. I don't know if you remember this, Aslan, because you don't really follow Florida State football. Right. But one time they went wire to wire. Yeah. Yeah, they were started number one in right. the country, won every game, and then finished number one in the country. Pretty cool. I think by beating uh, Virginia Tech. They did. The team that'll be to, to bring it on back to 2018, the team they'll open with. Man. Time is a flat line. Is that what you say, brother? A flat circle. Flat circle? Yeah. The flat line is kind of repetitive. God, I messed that up. That's my favorite line that you say is. Time is a flat circle? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. You say it with such gusto. All right. Um, so, so some other things observation-wise that we didn't get to make about practice. I stole that from True Detective, by the way. I, right. right. Well, I'm sure okay. you did. But just, you've, you've co-opted it so I, yeah. deftly that exactly. no one can even know as anybody else. I just wanted just a couple other observations. Again, these are things that we'll find out later at practice today. You're going to come out for practice. I'll be there. Tuesday, I'll right? be there. We get to talk and watch a little bit, so that's kind of cool. Uh, Kalen LeBorn, somebody was like, hey, no, he was out at practice. Here's a photo of him on his Instagram. He was inside the IPF, okay. so he wasn't actually in, – in the, in the window that we got to watch was not participating in practice, so we'll try to get maybe some insight into that. I also saw – Dontavious Jackson get on one of those golf carts with Stanford Samuels and a couple other of the injured players. I think Cedric Wood might have been another one of the guys. And they drove from wherever they were at in front of the Moore Center into, I guess, maybe the IPF. So a couple of those guys uh, banged up. But Cole Minshew did return. There you uh, go. But he was he was actually – Mike Mike Arnold was actually first-team right guard because Corey Martinez was not because of right. his – uh, impending, um, you know, sort of, I don't want to say retirement, but I don't want to say gave up because I feel that's kind of. It's kind of retirement. Yeah, he just retired. It's not like he didn't have a spot on the team. He did. Yeah. It wasn't like, I don't a forced say retirement. I think it's like, you know, I mean, words. yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess it's semantics, but he retired. He's right. pursuing other things in his life. But yeah, so Cole Minshew's back out there. Um, he was holding the, the blocking pad. I didn't actually see him, like, you know. Get but he was there, at least. He, he was, was visible. Yeah. He was there. It's a good thing. Well, you hope, I mean, you really hope that Samuels is. I mean, yeah. that's a big deal. And Jackson, quite frankly, yeah. those are two starters. Because the linebackers, it's still, it's, you know. Well, that's a uh, huge question mark. I'm big on the defense, but it's like, well, about the linebackers? Like, ah, it's, it's okay, man. They'll have Burns coming off the edge, and Marvin Wilson's going to be all right, and Demarcus Christmas, and yeah. secondary will be all right. Linebackers are just, you know. You got just, no experience. Just be window linebacker. dressing. Just get in somebody's way. Yeah, sure. Get a couple passing lanes. Put your hands up. So, all right, that's all I got. You want to go to practice? Let's do it, man. Let's do it. Hey, we're already up, right? Yeah, right. Might as well go see some football. Wake up! Let's do it. All right, man. He's Corey Maslow. Thanks so much for listening. We'll catch up with you guys tomorrow. I think Jeff Cameron's coming up at three. You guys going to do headlines? A little later? headlines coming up later in the day as well. All right, right on. Thanks for listening, folks. 
Warchant.com is the ultimate inside source for FSU football and recruiting. And now you can get in on the action for free for an entire month. Warchant.com is offering a risk-free 30-day trial subscription. Get full access to the number one website covering the Seminoles just by entering the promo code WARCHANT30. That's WARCHANT30. Sign up and get in on the world's most active FSU message boards. Receive breaking news, stories from our award-winning staff, plus get exclusive interviews and videos. Just enter the promo code WARCHANT30. WARCHANT.com, your ultimate Seminole sports source.